Life today on Dr. Keith Ablo. The real things that weigh on people, they're the things they won't look at. I'm a psychiatrist. I've done this work over 15 years. I'm fully committed to holding people's hands while we explore their past. Nobody has a perfect life. I don't have a perfect life. But there are things you can do to make your life better. where people go to compete for the really big prizes and have a chance at fame. It's become a place where people can actually find love, or at least they say they can. So can the love really survive once they go back to their own realities without cameras? We're going to find out. Today we're going to meet reality stars who are going to... There's definitely a stigma attached to what are now called, quote-unquote, reality couples. But some couples have proven us all wrong. They've stuck it out. They're going the distance, while others haven't been so lucky. Take a look. From Big Brother to the biggest loser, hit reality shows are producing more than just ratings. I did find the show kind of as a win. It just kind of all fell in my lap. A new movie! Only thing is I walked away with the husband. Relationships. Weddings and babies. The offspring of reality TV. We met through a different media. You know, people meet at bars and they stay married. People meet at the shopping mall and they stay married. And we just took a different avenue. Exotic locations and cash prizes seem to be the ultimate recipe for romance. Whenever you take a group of single, attractive individuals, naturally there's going to be romances. But when the cameras stop rolling, will the relationships last? I think Will and I just got really lucky. I don't think either of us were looking for anybody to date. Nonetheless, from I'm like my girlfriend on a reality television show. Is it that crazy? I, I mean, I think at this day and age, you can meet someone on television, start a relationship, and, and have a viable future. What's the yeah. future for us? I hope right. I mean, I hope right. Well, who's ever with Aaron is going to be very lucky. So. Thank you. You are. Back at you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Well, please welcome Aaron Brody from the reality show for Love and Money and her boyfriend of two years, Dr. Will Kirby. He's just known for competing and winning the second season of Big Brother. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Well... Whatever possessed you, by the way, to start on the reality circuit or life? Uh, I, I totally fell into it, actually. I, I was just having um, lunch at work, and I was a little hungover, actually. It was on a Friday. <laughs> and they uh, discussed... You're starting the show off. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I know. No, oh, thank you. Um, I don't know. And it just kind of... I literally went in for the audition. They flew me out a week later, and I was on a show. I actually didn't know what the premise was. Okay, and you were not on the same show together... At, intern at the time. Okay, now I didn't do a reality show as an intern, so tell me, uh, that wasn't one of my rotations. Yeah, I had just, uh, I had just finished uh, doing my internship, and I, um, you know, I just wasn't, my life wasn't fulfilled. I wanted a little something extra, and I figured, what better way to get a little extra money, a little extra fame than going on a reality show? Yeah, well, there's that, um, and, and you did, and you felt like it went well. Went great for me. Went great for you. Yeah, we lucked out. You, you lucked out. Now, yeah. introduce the dog. Oh, this is... I feel, is, I feel <laughs> like this we're is actually, sliding the puppy. Let's not... Yeah, we need to mic her up. Can we get a mic her? We should her? mic her. She's, uh, this is actually her third time on television. This is the world's cutest dog, so... A reality <laughs> dog. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Scout is cute. Scout has fans. Look at this. Oh, Scout is cute. Very cute. All right, so now for Lover Money. Right. Um, you go on the show. And, yeah. and, and people came to conclude things about you that are true or untrue. What did you feel? Did they get to know you? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, they only show a very small portion of what they tape over the four-week time span. But in many ways, they edited me better than I am in real life, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I'm a lot more klutzy than they edited me there. Um, and in some ways, you know, it's just I think the premise of the show is about love and money. And any time you mix those two premises, there's a lot of emotions tied to it. Okay, so they're, right. And, and of course, you chose the money. The first time, yeah, first I, did, time. I did choose the money. And the, the guy chose you. I did choose me, yeah. 
So, like, did that disclose any kind of deep, any deep character on your part? And I know that your family had a reaction when you came back from the show, right? Yeah, my so. family was very supportive through the whole thing. Um, you know, it's it's difficult, but I think if you if you watch the show, you can kind of tell that I didn't have too much of a connection with the gentleman there. Um, yeah. And we were more like friends, I don't know, it just... But there is a re-entry phase, and this is like intriguing to me as a psychiatrist. Here you are as an intern, you start in reality TV, and you've done it more than once, obviously. Sure. Okay, and you come back to your family, and you said there was like this sort of re-entry phase, you've been away. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You go back to your real life, I don't know if this happened to you, I think we've talked about it a little bit, but you go back to your real life and it, it, you feel like a fish out of water, you know? Well, how so? Tell me more about um, that. Why a fish out of water? For me I did. I think it's, it's like you're on the internet. I hadn't seen the computer in, in a month. and So like it's an unreal reality, sort of. And did you find that? Because here you are treating patients. I mean, I know what it is to be an intern. Sure. And, and you weren't doing dermatology back then. You were doing, like, what, internal medicine? Yeah, I was just a, I was a grunt. So, like, people are bleeding. People are, like, you're saving lives. And then, like, you're on TV. And then you go back to that. It's a weird, it's a weird um, dichotomy. I, the, the thing is this. As far as perception is concerned, obviously, there's a big difference. Doing reality TV for six years, you've done it for four years. Yeah, and at some point, you develop a pretty thick skin. And for I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse, but I lack the ability to um, to really care what people think about me because I feel like I'm a good person in my heart. I feel like I do the right thing. I try to give great, entertaining TV. And if people get it, that's wonderful. And if they don't, that's fine because that's not how I, I judge myself based on my own personal perceptions of myself, not based on what the internet thinks of me. Right, okay, and, and their thoughts may not be accurate anyhow. So exactly. That's what I asked Aaron when we first started. Do, do people know you by watching you on reality TV? Or you could tell us. Do people know him by watching reality TV? Or, or um, is he a whole different kind of... You know, throughout his show, he kept saying, I'm so different in my real life. I'm much more... He, he takes his work very seriously, and he works his butt off. I'm allowed to say that, right? Um, but he, as far as a sense of humor, it's exactly the same. I mean, same sense of humor. Yeah. But we'll talk more and try to get deep inside this man when we uh, come back. Next up, Dr. Will and Aaron are going to explain what happened when their fans tried to take control of their relationship. Was the real stuff enough to hold them tightly together? We'll find out. Stay with us. Dr. Will Kirby, the reality TV stars, everybody knows that, and fell in love after meeting on a reality reunion show. Now they've been dating for almost two years. Okay, you didn't meet on the show, though, and you met where? In a mall, I heard. That's actually true. Yeah, actually that's, that is true. You met in a mall. That, yeah. We met about... What, just like shopping? <laughs> I, was dating, I was dating someone else, this is about five years ago, and the girl I was dating recognized Aaron, and she said I was a big fan of hers, I watched her show, and uh, let's go introduce ourselves, because you want a show, and I said, sure. So we walked up to her, and, um, and the, the girl I was dating introduced herself, and Aaron wasn't very friendly, and I said, listen, I just want to tell you, you know, we kind of have something in common, because I've won a reality show, too, and she I said... I've a mission. She you a mission? What were you doing? <laughs> just kidding. She, did, she was shopping, but she couldn't... I was she in did, a huge hurry. She didn't even acknowledge my existence, and I was like... I, wait a second. I, yeah, I was like, hey, wait a minute here. So she left, and I was like, I can't, the nerve of that girl, I can't believe that. But it burned a little image in my mind, and then uh, three years later, we met again. Yeah. And I was on the phone, I said, listen, I didn't get a chance to introduce myself. My name's Will, and I'd love to take you to dinner. And she said, you don't want to date me because, um, but what did you say? I said, you don't want to date me, and you said, why? And I said, because I'm a nightmare. She said, I'm a pain in the ass. Yeah, I said, I'm a pain in the ass. And I said, hey, that's okay, because I'm really needy. So then she started laughing about the show anymore. Like, this is real life when you try to have a relationship. But you've coined a term. Now I'm going to be the psychiatrist again. Let's see it. Showmance. I'm not going to charge you because I actually have a copyright on that word, but I'm going to let it slide. All right, let it slide. What is showmance? Showmance is when you have a romance or your freshman year of college. Showmance. Okay, now, is this, so what is this now? Like, granted, you you met at a reunion for the second time, a reunion of shows. Yeah. So do you consider this a showmance? No, this definitely. isn't. <laughs> no, this is a you romance. Did. We've been dating a long time, and I, I mean, I'd like to think it's a lot more than, than something that just happened as a, on a whim. Am I wrong? No, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> well, I, mean, is it, I think it's sort of important you're because... You're so cute right now. So what I'm trying to get at is, is he, do you wonder about I mean, this guy at all, like whether he needs 
like it's needs me. But do you feel like you need to be no, like you know, acting at all in order to maintain no, that's interest good, together? That's a good question. Um, I, I go in phases. Sometimes I enjoy it, and sometimes I just want to crawl aside in a hole. Um, Will on our relationship? Oh, no, no. We're talking about being in the spotlight. Oh, okay. right. being in the spotlight. But also, I wonder no, whether no. I wonder whether you because I think you've told people who work with me because you know I've read yeah. lots about you guys that you wonder whether he needs it like a yeah, drug a little bit more than. You need a lot of attention? Absolutely. I told, it's, when we first met, the first thing I told her, she said, I'm a pain in the ass, and I said, I'm very needy. So I was honest. Yeah. I, I like attention. No, he does. I mean, I think for Will, he thrives off it. And um, he's happy doing entertainment, and I think he, he's very passionate about making it a good show. So for him, he definitely needs it in his life. And since I'm dating him, I kind of just go with the flow. He's cost. No, but I do. Don't. If I'm going to commit to doing a reality show, I try to make it entertaining. Like, what if someone said, "Let's do a reality show. You guys separate and see if you can live with the, without each other." Would you no, do I it if it were that. well televised? No, I wouldn't do that. I, I mean, well, really? Are you sure? Here's Wait. the thing. With with with. That sounds like yeah. here's you're the thing. not quite sure. There's, there's rules to everything, and if you said okay. to me under certain circumstances, and if you consider a lot of different options, then that's some. I would consider absolutely everything, and I've done that before. So you might consider time. like separate, because I know like when, when, there are reality shows that have hurt marriage, like Nick and Jessica's reality show yeah. hurt their marriage, right? What are you so, I mean, so I'm help. just wondering if you worry whether... Well, here's the question. If they had stuck it out, would they have had a stronger relationship? And that's a question we'll never know because, you know, a, yeah. a reality show really tests how committed you are and how strong your relationship is. And a relationship, yeah. I think you'll agree with me, it isn't, it isn't based on the best points, like when you win a reality show Absolutely. and when you're famous, it's based on the worst points, when the cameras aren't rolling and you're home alone. So, I mean, the fact yeah. that, we, that, that we do date is kind of testament to the fact that we have a pretty solid relationship. Solid really, and we know that partly because, you know, one of the side effects, if you will, of having a showman's a real love affair, which I think it's like a real love affair, is that the fans don't know that. So they have, have at certain points been a stress in the relationship. They've tried to break you guys up. Oh, gosh. Well, I people who, in real life, in your, um, how can I put it, in 3D and on day-to-day -day basis, people are very supportive and very friendly. There's a bizarre internet component to the reality shows. because it, huge. The, yeah. it, they think that they have a level of intimacy with you because they watch the show. So um, people on the internet, they, they don't have that necessarily that social barrier where they're embarrassed to say something to your face. So the internet is, is in many ways desirable because you like look the way guy. you do, but also <laughs> start coming here more often. Well, thank but, you, Dr. Gary. And you're on yeah. TV, so, I mean, do you have issues with girls going up to him and saying, oh, come on, you know, you don't need to be with her. They feel like they know you. She's no good, you know. The, yeah, she has I mean, a very high-profile job as well, and, I mean, it's no secret that, you know, you get asked out all yeah. the time. So. It, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that difficult. No. Okay, not that difficult. No. All right. Well, I hope you'll stay with us. We're going to be joined by I'm other guests. Here. I guess I'm <laughs> flattered. Flattered. <laughs> flattered that, yeah, I'm that flattered in reality, girls, quote know? unquote, in reality, you picked her. In reality. Yeah, I mean, no, listen, no relationship's perfect, but we try to make this as perfect as we can. And a relationship is hard work. No one's, you can't just Absolutely. win a relationship. So we work at it all the time, and we have our ups and our downs. And you know, I'm not the world's greatest boyfriend, but I try to improve. All right. <laughs> Next up, we're going to meet a couple from the weight loss reality TV show, The Biggest Loser. Come Combined, they lost 252 pounds, 252 pounds, but they gained something very unexpected in the process. Stay with us. Is there an issue in your life? I met Matt uh, the first day on the show. Um, my first impression was not a good one. I was like, here's this of what I ever expected to be with. I thought she was really annoying. I mean, she was always happy. She just had this little squeal when she laughed. <laughs> I mean, it was, it annoyed me. My feelings towards him started to change when he started to change, and he became the man that I know today. For the people who think that, like, reality couples aren't real, I mean, I would say come live a week with us. <laughs> We're about as real as you get. Okay, we just watched tape of Matt and Susie. They were contestants on the weight loss reality TV show, The Biggest Loser. Not only did they end up losing weight, they also gained a soulmate, each of them. Now, please welcome Matt and Susie Hoover from the reality show, The Biggest Loser.
Hi, welcome, guys. Uh, hello. hello. Yeah, it seems like the first question that I've been asking here is, why, why'd you do it? Why did you decide to go on a reality TV show to lose weight? Um, well, it was kind of a whim. I think a lot of people say that, that end up getting on. I, I was like, in my mind, I'm like, I would never go on a reality show. That's ridiculous. I ended up being at a client's house, doing her hair. An open call came on for it. She said, you should go on. So you were like, okay. Well, no. <laughs> I said, yeah. no way. Only weird people do that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, it's interesting. Wait, no. but, but you're both reality, you know, reality couples. You're both involved in, I'll say it again, don't charge me, showmance of a kind. Sorry. Bill me. Invoice to Dr. Keith Ablisha. But you turn to them and you're like, sorry, guys. Do you think of them as more... I was talking to him, too. Oh, to no, him, I'm too. But do you consider them more of like a, a, a cliche reality couple than you? Um, because I know you think of yourself as like, I mean, you guys are like, together, you're married, you're, you're, you're pregnant. Yes. So, so do you, do you think of yourself as sort of an exception to the reality showman's thing or? Well, ours wasn't, we didn't even like each other on the show. It, yeah. it all happened. So that's a yes, right? You yeah, do. Kind of. You do. And with the one thing we've learned with the, the reality romance thing is I will never judge them or any other character on TV. I say character because that's what we play on TV. On TV, you play, you're playing a character. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a character. You're yourself, but they're how the network portrays you and what you see. How big is the distance? You're in a unique position, Matt, to tell us. How big is that gap? In other words, if you look at yourself as a character, as portrayed on a reality TV show, is that pretty close to who you are? Is it a mile away? Is it... For me personally, I thought it was pretty close. I didn't think I cried as much as they showed on TV. Because it seemed like <laughs> All right. every week I was bawling. But I mean, for you know, when you do that and you say that and on camera, you obviously did that. That is really that. you, of yeah. course. Now, there is a famous clip from the show where Matt gives in and not only agrees to have his hair cut, but lets Susie do it. So take a look at this. Are you nervous? No, I'm ready to get rid of it. I think it's been damn near two years since I cut my hair. So does my face look fatter now or what? No, it looks good. Once I started taking off the hair, facial features came out, but mostly confidence. He just looked so good. Wow, holy moly. It made him look younger and thinner. I think it's going to be a huge turning point for him. <laughs> Huge turning, huge, and that's a real turning point. I mean, there's nothing fake about that. No, absolutely. I, would, I actually believe that, that my hair was kind of making me look thin. I was hiding behind it. And when she cut that off for me, it let me be a new person. Let me see the results that I'd achieved. And when she was a part of that, that was kind of the first time where I was like, my whole attitude, I started smiling. I stood up straighter. It, it changed everything for me. And that's when I was like, she isn't that annoying. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a... <laughs> And your, um, your motivation to do this was partly because you just felt like, God, I've let, I, I was an athlete, I've let myself go so much. Is yeah, that... I wrestled at the University of Iowa, and we won four Division One national titles. I mean, that's a big there. deal. That I didn't fulfill what I felt I could. I fell apart, and I got the, my biggest was actually over 350 pounds. Wow. But I was literally laying on the couch. I'd turn my couch so like, how hard these workouts are where they're trying to lose weight. And I'm like, whatever, you know. So I, I wrestled at Iowa. I could do this. So I rolled off the couch, applied, and my life's never been the same since. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Let me ask you as well, Doctor. Uh, I guess when anybody dates, right, there's a suspension of reality anyhow. Because we all act sort of in a way to be attractive to each other. So is it just, do you think it's just that, like, but hyperbolically in a reality TV show? Like, when you date women, how long does it take before you're, like, sh you know, throwing laundry in a laundry basket with her? In other words, like... It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> right, there you go. Good. That's, a good, that's a good point. Uh, no, you're right. There's always, you know, you want to be on your... You want to um, you get one chance to make a first impression, and you want, you want to, you know, be perceived in an accurate light when you're dating, but you also want to, you know, be perceived in a positive light. So, what, there's, like, a good six, eight-week window when you're dating someone where you really... Before you let the skeletons out of the closet, that so are there things? What's what's something that you, that no fan knows about you that's really you for sure? That's me for sure. Really um, you for sure. Like something about you that no no one really knows that they'd say. Well, now we sort of know them. I, uh, 
it's going to be impossible for me to say something and have everyone go, ah, oh, wow, now we really know him. But, um, you know, I take my work very seriously. I pride myself on being a good physician. I think I have a gift for that. And I, I'm, it's much like you. You know, you have, you have a medical background, but you combine it seamlessly with entertainment, and it works really Some well. Some say not seamlessly, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> right. Arguably, but, and you, but you do. Bugs. So, yeah. And I collect and bugs. Pet. All right, I'm, a nerd. I'm, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I, in real life, I'm really nerdy. It's a bug collection. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Bugs? <laughs> See that? No, no one knew Thanks. that about you. Next up, Matt and Susie explain why they're not the stereotypical reality couple. There are details to come. Stay with us. Miss. Okay, we're talking with couples who found, well, true love, apparently, while on a reality show. And we're back with Susie and Matt Hoover from the weight loss reality TV show, The Biggest Loser. Okay, well, first question's to you. How long was it before you realized that this love was like a, a love of, the, the love of your life, essentially? Right. Well, we didn't even start liking each other till two weeks before we went home. And our show was three and a half months long. So, we went home... And then we're separated for five months, came back together at the finale. But I knew before we left, because I don't do anything, like, just for kicks. Like, I wasn't you don't? Like, no. I mean, well, I'll do things <laughs> no, for kicks. No, but this was, but like, your first boyfriend? Is that true? Yeah, I hadn't so dated. Your I was first like, boyfriend. I was like, why am I going to waste my kisses? Why am I going to waste my emotion on someone who never deserves it? So he was actually the first guy and only guy that I felt like deserved that. And that's like, wow. before we went home, I, I uh, kind of knew. Well, that's a piece of reality. How do you feel hearing that? Like, not, you know, men would have different reactions to that. You are her first and only. Do you feel pressured? Do you feel uh, grateful? Do you, what do you, I mean? I'm, I'm very grateful that she had those high standards to save herself for her husband, which is me. And not have to. <laughs> Which is me. Yeah. I'm so glad she had this yeah. high standard. She got me. No, it's yeah. true. There you go. You know, but she was able, because of that, <laughs> she was able to, you know, as we start, you talked, Dr. Will talked about, you know, the first impressions. She thought I was a big jerk because I was. But she watched this transformation and she got to know the real me that very few people know and fall in love with me. And now we're married and, you know, the cameras are off and we're starting our family and having a child. And it, it doesn't have to be about, you know, this and that or comparing, well, you know, I dated so-and-so. And, -so and I, it's just, we, yeah, there's no pressure at all for me. All right, well, Aaron, when you think about the guy next to you um, and, and a life with him, Mm -hmm. What's the real, not, not the reality show version, the real challenge that you would say, you know, to a friend or to your mom or whatever, you know, here's what I think could be a hurdle with them? I, I, think, I think with Will and I, we're, we're incredibly strong-minded, I think almost to a fault. Um, and we, uh, we agree on a lot of things, but we also very strongly disagree on things that aren't that major. But I just think in general, we're both strong-willed and stubborn. But I, I think strong-willed, stubborn, yeah. fight a lot. No, not really. not really. I mean, being stubborn is, in a lot of ways... I know, it's, she's like, he's really going after that. Yeah. Yeah, well, being, no, I mean, being stubborn, in a lot of ways, it's me, and so do you. I and when you, too. And I have a tendency to sort of, you know, speak my mind a lot. And when someone stands up to me and voices being someone who I didn't respect, then that's not a strong relationship. Okay, and then, back to you guys. I'm picking on everybody today. And, and you, part of the foundation of your relationship is that you both summoned extraordinary will to... No pun intended, Will. Um, to, uh, to lose weight in dramatic fashion. That's part of what you learned about each other in that environment. Mm -hmm. Now, were one of you to gain that weight back, as happens in, in, in life, would you then conclude, oh my God, like it, it wasn't real? Like here, you give him this haircut and sort of in a reverse version of Samson, he gets stronger. Um, and, and so. Would, would you somehow say, well, I don't know, because we kind of met in that forum, and now he's back to the old guy? Uh, that's not why I married him, though. You know. You sure? Yeah. You sure it's not because he did such an incredible feat on the show that you fell in love with him because of no. that? No. It, it was the character traits and the man he was during that, and who I've gotten to see every day. You know. Oh, so you've confirmed it? Like, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, the other thing is she knows I'm never going back. That I've, I mean, I obviously don't weigh 182 pounds anymore, but I've kept off over 100 pounds for a year, and I will not go back. And I think, if anything, what you talked about earlier, yeah. that means that our kid's going to be strong because we're not going to let him go through all Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Questions? This question is for Dr. Will over there. Do you have any future plans for another reality show? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, I'm shooting Dr. 90210 with uh, E right now, so that's going to start airing. That's a this, definite um, plan. Some, yeah. Okay. All right, we'll be back with someone you're going to recognize from Extreme Makeover. But first, everybody in the audience, just so you know, is going to go home with the Biggest Loser cookbook and the DVD of The Biggest Loser 2, The Workout. So everybody at home can get in shape and eat healthy. The DVD and the cookbook are available in stores everywhere. Stay with us. went on the show she hoped to have a physical transformation and not only did she leave the show feeling more beautiful but she found her true love but then things took an unexpected turn please welcome Casey to the show hey Casey hi how are you good welcome so tell me why did you go on the show to begin with? Well, um, you know what? I, I've always had insecurities, mostly about my nose. Um, and I'd always wanted to have a nose job. And then all of a sudden, I, uh, I saw this show on television. And um, I took the opportunity. It tells you at the end of the show how to apply. So I did. So you did. And you were selected, obviously. Right. And, and so then what happened, you, we, we know the transformation that took place. And we see the result. Were you happy with the physical part? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, I mean, the end result was I, I was I was very nervous going into it. I have to admit because you know you, you're changing your entire appearance. You don't know what they're going to do to you. Um, so I was nervous about it, but I came out of it looking still like me, just better. Just better. And, <laughs> and was doing it as part of a reality TV show. Was it? Do you think did it help you through the process? Did you feel you had more support than you would have had otherwise, or was it an added stress? No, you really need a lot of support going through stuff like that. Um, it's very scary. So um, to have to have the people I knew and loved most probably would have would have helped me more. Sure. Okay. And so in that very stressful environment, you find somebody who sweeps you off your feet. Right. Okay. How did that take place? Tell me the story of your romance. Um, well, we met actually. Um, he had already had his makeovers. Um, he had just taken. It was I think two days before my surgery. Um, and I walked in the room, and he was sitting in there talking to them. Um, so I walked in, and we were introduced. Um, and I thought, at first, I thought he worked for the show because he wasn't wearing any bandages. So, um, so I, I had no idea. And then after we were introduced, was when I found out that he um, had just had his makeovers. Uh, you come to lean on. Right. right. He's been through the same experience. He knows the stresses. So, and, and it happened. Like, right. you certainly felt like genuine love had found you. I did. I did. I was completely swept off my feet. I thought that, you know, he was the one and that we were going to spend the rest of our lives together. And then uh, tell us the rest of the story, because the rest of the story is reality for sure and not as happy. Right. Well, I mean, it, you said it, you hit it right on the nose. It was, this is the real reality of it. It's, um, obviously now it's over. Um, it was it was a huge hype while we were in front of the cameras and going on making all these guest appearances and things like that and we got pregnant with with um, our first child um, only four months after we had met so it was like boom 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 things just were happening. Just right away just one thing after another. I know your mom's here right? Right. right. So please stand up. Yeah. Do you, so welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So first of all, when you saw your daughter's transformation, pleased? Were you pleased with it? The results? Yeah, absolutely. It was a tremendous relief. Beautiful. She wanted to change it, I'm thinking extreme makeover. That means she's going to look like a completely different person. 
So the reveal was just tremendous. I mean, I shook. I was so excited when I saw her. And, and in your absence, and you are close, I take it. Well, very, right. yeah. very close. Yeah. Okay, so in your absence, she finds somebody who's tremendously important to her emotionally. She's going through an incredibly stressful time. She's sequestered. So, you know, no contact, right, with your family? Uh, we were allowed to talk on the phone. Okay, talk on the phone, but no visits. No, and okay. no. we were only an hour away. An hour, an so hour frustration, drive. you're missing your mom. And, and this man who becomes her husband is present and there for her and helpful. Were you worried when you heard that she had found, quote, unquote, true love? Yes, very worried. <laughs> what, what, what did you tell her? What did you... I, I told her that I was concerned. I mean, I was happy for her that she met somebody. She seemed happy. She seemed to really like him. But I was very concerned. This is too quick. It was they knew each other. They were together for eight weeks. They were on so that's a, yeah. a show for eight weeks. And, and do you think that was an ingredient in your decision-making process? In other words, if it hadn't been in the setting of a reality show, would you have taken longer or not necessarily? Um, not necessarily. I think we were kind of swept away with the romance as well as the reality TV right. part, part of it. Because you did it very quickly. You didn't. You dated for how long? Almost a year. Almost a year. So, like, that's so a, rea a reality <laughs> romance that that was more measured in time. And, of course, you've been dating two years. So it's not... So you made a different kind of decision. Right. Okay. And, and, uh, and fortunately, this one didn't work out for you in the way you'd hoped. No. Okay. Well, we need to talk more about that. But to the media, Casey and James were known as America's sweethearts. But Casey says they're... <laughs> A mother says the unthinkable. Do you think your mom loves you? The anger illness takes hold. I feel like a monster. You want to be a better mother. Her young daughter's plea. I hope that she'll get better soon and she'll get help. You're not alone in that. Nine out of ten adults don't get their daily recommended amount of fruit and vegetables. That's why there's V8 V Fusion Juice. It gives you vegetable goodness we all need, but with the light, sweet, refreshing taste of fruit juice. There's a full serving of fruit and a full serving of vegetables in every eight ounces. Plus, it's 100% juice with antioxidant vitamins A. ...acting out and getting into trouble? If your teenager has behavioral problems and you want Dr. Keith's help, call 1-888-DR-KEITH. Casey, you went on the reality show Extreme Makeover for a physical transformation. She fell in love, but the love didn't last. Well, how long after the show, Casey, did you stay together, exactly? Um, we were together for almost three years. Okay, it would so, have been three years just a few days ago. So it's not like it lasted 90 days. Oh, no. I mean, and, and when did trouble set in? Um, I think the first signs of trouble were when I got pregnant with our first child, our son. Okay, so the, the, that was the first sign of trouble. Is, and why? Why was that trouble um, for him or you or, or both of you? Well, you know what? Like I said, um, when, when he and I first met, we met and four months later I was pregnant. And so um, up until then everything was all exciting and, and we were attached at the hip and everything was just so brand new and fun. And, um, and then reality hits really fast. And real reality no kidding. Yeah. hits, you know, right. as soon as the pregnancy starts because then you got to start planning he didn't have a job at the time and so we were we were struggling financially um, you know I mean it was just we were having to learn how to be parents not just a couple sure and Susie and Matt what, what do you guys do now like for work I do the same thing I've done for 11 years <laughs> So, I'm a what? hairdresser. Oh, okay, right. And you, that's why you cut his hair, obviously. Yeah. So, you're still doing it. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you're waiting for your next reality gig no, or no, something no, no, no. or, you know, that's babies not... born no. to reality stars. No, 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 no. No. Okay, and, and I actually travel all over the country sharing my story with other people. I've talked a lot of hospitals. As an inspirational and speaker. And... Inspirational speaking. Oh, that's great. And, and uh, what's your expectation in terms of her expecting? Uh, you can think probably about father. You, this is your first child? Yeah. Okay, so what are your thoughts? Because that's, as she says, real reality. Uh, my first thought is my number one, you know, when we, people ask me, you know, what's, what's some of your upcoming goals? Mine is to be the best husband and father I could possibly be and that my child never has to worry about what's going on. You know, the, <laughs> the, the thing that I want to do is instill good values and have a good family. And for me and for Susie both, we're not 
looking to be on the next reality show. And just as Will said, you're never going to absolutely turn down any possibilities, but you look into it much more carefully. I've even tailored my speaking engagement so that I fly out and I fly home, so I can go to all of our doctor's appointments so that I'm around. And that's, that's important for me. So, you know, I, th I think when it comes right down to it, it's just being a, a real life father, not what people want to assume I am because of so, TV. So let me ask you the platinum question. Here. Would you do another one? In other words, if someone said, we want to chronicle the birth of your child, we want to see what kind of father you're going to be, yeah, we've actually talked about that quite a bit, and we've had some questions about that, and we're, it's a case-by-case -case thing. I think it's, there's too many, I, it's almost like, and I hate to say it, but it's almost like a curse to see a newlywed couple on television or someone starting their family. I know. And we're not it's interested true. in that. Yeah. We yeah. have, I think that's probably why you don't see much of us, because we are so normal. It's just like, well, we don't cause drama when we're on the set. We don't do this. It's just, we go home, we're going to fly home tonight, we'll have supper and work out. Experience the highs and lows of reality romance. Right. Would, what about you? Would you re-up if somebody said, listen, we want to find your next lover, your next husband, um, on a reality show, would you say, let's go, I found one, and it didn't work out, but at least I found one? You know, um, romance, definitely not on television anymore. Why? Um, because, like he was saying, it's a curse. It is a major curse, and not only that, but it, it takes this, the reality this. out of the relationship. It takes the, you, you do feel it takes reality out of the oh, relationship. Oh, yeah. Now, we do have a statement, by the way, from James. Right? Your ex. Uh-huh. Okay. He gave us a statement, which, which was actually pretty moving. He said, Casey and I were simply two different people looking for two different things. More that our kids have to go through all this. Now Casey and I just have to be civil and mature about how things proceed through the divorce and keep in mind that our kids come above all. I guess we get, you could agree on that. It's about the agree. kids. I absolutely agree. I just wonder how much he really means that. In reality. In reality. Right. I mean, it's almost like, you know, multiple lenses. You know, he writes that for our TV show, after all. It's right. to be televised. Like, I, I think it's a big question. What kind of filter is the television experience? We're going to track along with you guys, too, and find out just where this goes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you would like to attend a pre taping TV stars living real life. This is a question for Casey. I know you probably hear this a lot, but um, how differently do people react to you and treat you on the street and at home since you've been back from your transformation? You know, you'd be really surprised. I really don't get a very different reaction from what I used to get. I think it was more just me being self-conscious than anything. Okay. That's really interesting, actually. Hi, um, this is for Susie and Matt. First of all, the gift is great. I think it's a sign. But my other question was, in order to keep all this weight off, do you have to uh, maintain like, a really regular, uh, reg rigorous workout schedule and make up, plan all your meals and cook all that fancy special foods? And... Yeah, I believe maintaining is the hardest part of losing weight. To Absolutely. keep weight off, you have to do what you did to get it off. And I always say you're never done until you die, and all of us in here are alive. So... <laughs> Um, I could get a little break because I'm yeah. pregnant. We <laughs> no. Um, no, but, but that's kind of hard, too, because I was so used to, you know, every day being so regimented. And, but you have to do what you did to take it off, to keep it off. You ready to go? That's where you're, gonna, you're, you're, <laughs> yes, you're inspired. Go home you're saying you're inspired. inspired. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Good. I'm glad you're inspired. Also from Matt and Susie, I was wondering if you know if it's a boy or a girl. We know what he is, but we aren't saying. Okay. We know what he is? <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you. We're out of time. I want to thank all my guests. The website's drkeithtv.com. Remember, your story matters. The real story. We'll see you next time.